All right, guys, so one of the best things about React is how close it is to just writing regular ES6 or ES2015 JavaScript. And in this video, in the next two, we're just going to go over some of the core concepts of ES6 just to kind of prepare for React because this stuff, all the stuff you see here is very heavily used in React applications. So I just want to briefly go over this stuff. It's going to be very quick. I'm going to just touch on each thing and give you some examples and we'll move on. All right. So if you don't want to watch the next three videos, which are which are all the ES6 refresher videos, you can go ahead and skip them and, and jump right into React. But I would suggest watching them, uh, especially if you're not, you know, if you don't master all the stuff you see right here. So what I have is an index HTML file with just an H1 in the body and then a script to the main JS file, which is what you just saw. So I'm going to start this up. You can either open the file. If you're following along, you can either open the file on your file system or if you're using live server like I am, you can just go ahead and say open with live server and it'll open up. We're going to open up our Chrome tools as well down here. So we have our console and we're going to start off with const and let. So and I know a lot of you guys know this stuff, but again, just to go over it before we get into react, uh, especially for people that are rusty on it. So constant let are used to declare variables in ES5. We would use var. So we would say var name equals a string called John. All right. Now constant let were created for block level scoping. So you could have scope inside of a loop or a, a conditional or whatever. So it's it's better to use either const or let. Now the difference is basically const you cannot reassign. So I can't say const name equals John and then turn around and say name equals Jack. If I do that, if I save down here and, and live server is going to auto refresh down here, you'll see I get a type error uh, assignment to constant variable, which isn't allowed. Okay, now if I were to use let here and save, you'll see we don't get the error and then just to show you I'll console.log out the name variable. Whoops. And we get Jack. So that's that's perfectly okay. Also, if you want to initialize a variable, you can't just do like const test and just initialize it without a value. If you want to do that, you have to use let in that case as well. Okay, so I personally what I do is I always use const unless I know I'm going to reassign it. Okay, or unless it's something that is just being initialized and I'm going to I'm going to add the value to it later. In most cases, we're dealing with like objects and arrays and stuff like that. And you can still manipulate objects and arrays, anything that's not like a a, um, a native data type, like a string or a number or a Boolean, you can use const. And that's mostly what we'll be doing. So just to give you an example, let's say const person and we'll set this to have a name of John and then Let's put an age of 33. Okay, so even though I use const, I can still go ahead and say person dot name equals and then I can change it to let's say Jack. Okay, and then if I console dot log the person object and save, you'll see that the name is Jack. This is absolutely fine because what we're doing is we're manipulating an object that's already created. Now I can't recreate it. I can't say person equals name Jack. If I try to do that, we're going to get that same error. So you can't do that, uh, but you can change values inside of the object that's already created. Same thing with an array. If I were to say const nums and set it to an array of let's say one, two, three, four, and then I wanted to add a five on the end of it, I could certainly do nums dot push and just add on a five. And if I console dot log nums, whoops, nums and save, we get one through five. Okay, so you can do that as well. So that's it for constant let. I don't want to spend too much more time on this. Uh, let's move on to arrow functions. So arrow functions are a big part of React. We're going to be using these everywhere. So a regular function, let's just do something very simple, like say hello. And we'll just have it uh, log to the console. Hello. OK, and then if we call it down here and run it, we see we get hello. Now to create an arrow function here, 
what we could do is create a const or you could use let var whatever you want and call it say hello and then say equals and then we want our parentheses which is where our parameters would go and then an arrow and then in here we'll say console dot log and we'll say hello and save and we get the same thing now with arrow functions you don't if it's only one line inside the function like if we're not creating variables and stuff doing other stuff here and it's just one line we don't even need the curly braces we can get rid of these so we can just go like that and if i save it still works and it's much cleaner looking and if we want to add parameters we can put something in here like a name Now notice watch when I save this when I save the parentheses go away and the reason is because I'm using the prettier extension and the auto format and with arrow functions when you only have one parameter or one argument you don't need the parentheses so prettier automatically strips them off um, if you were to have more than one though like name let's say I don't know maybe like greet or something like that then in that case we would need the parentheses like that. Okay, but I'm just going to have just name and then over here we could do like hello space and then we could concatenate the name variable and then pass in a name here and save and we get hello Brad. Now another nice feature of VS6 is our template literals. So instead of having to concatenate like this, what we can do is not instead of quotes, we use back ticks and just cut, just go around the, in the entire thing. Okay, you may have a lot of variables in here. And then any variable, all you have to do is wrap it in this syntax. So money sign and then curly braces save and we still we get hello, Brad. Okay, so that's th those are template literals and, and we won't be using these that much because uh, in React we have where you we use JSX, which is where we can actually output HTML and we can use expressions inside JSX with just curly braces. So we can have variables and stuff with just curly braces. But this is just a, a, a helpful part of ES6 in general. All right. So let's see. Let's get rid of the say hello here. And let's move on to some of the high order array methods because we use these quite a bit as well. Uh, for each is the easiest. Basically, this is just a way to loop through uh, an array or something like that and just do what you want in each iteration. So, for example, let's create an, an array called fruits. And let's see, we'll set that to apples, oranges and grapes. Okay, so we have an array of fruits. I'm actually going to move this out of the for each because I'm going to use this in other places as well. Uh, so what I want to do is just loop through it. So I'll say fruits dot for each and then this takes in a function. So you could do a function. You could do that, but we're going to use an arrow function. So we just want to put some parentheses and then an arrow just like that. And then this function takes in at least one parameter, which is going to be the variable that you want to use for each item in the array. Okay, you can also put an index in if you want. And then in here, let's just do a console dot log. Okay, for each doesn't return anything. It just loops through and lets you do whatever you want. So we're just going to log fruit and save and we get apples, oranges and grapes. Okay, and since this is just one line in here, just like I showed you up top, we don't need the curly braces. We can just do that. All right. And then let's see what else do we want to do here. Uh, map is similar. It works in a similar way to for each, except it returns an array. It returns uh, an array that you can basically change. You can change each item in the array however you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take fruits and I'm going to say dot map and it takes in a function just like Uh, for each. So we'll put in fruit here, arrow function. And then how do we want to manipulate each item? Let's take the S off of off of each one. And we want to put this in a variable, actually, because it's going to return something. So let's say single fruit. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the fruit, the current item in the array that we're that we're currently dealing with. And I'm going to use the slice method, which is just a JavaScript method. So slice and then I'm going to put in zero and negative one, which is going to take off the last character. So it's going to take off the S from each one. So let's go down here and let's console dot log. 
uh, single fruit and save. And now you can see right here we get apple, orange and grape. So it took the S off of each one. Let me just comment out um, for each. All right. And you can manipulate it in any way that you want. If I wanted to make these all uppercase, I could add on to this and say dot two uppercase like that. And now we have single fruits that are all uppercase. So that's map. And we use map and react to loop through what are called lists. And you'll we'll learn more about that later. So let's see, we'll go ahead and comment the output. And now we'll look at filter. So filter is similar to for each and map. It's a high order array method and it's used to return an array with things filtered out. And often this is used in state managers like Redux or even the context API where you want to delete fr something from the state. You want to filter it out. So the example I'm going to give you is an array called people. And inside the array we have an object, let's say ID one. And let's say name and we'll say Karen and then let's create a couple of these. So we'll do three of these. So this one we'll say Bob and let's change his ID to two. This one will be three and let's change to I don't know Sharon, Karen and Sharon. So we have uh, an array of people. Now let's say I want to filter out Bob. Okay, I basically want to remove Bob. I want to return an array. that removes Bob. So let's go and let's say const. Uh, we'll say const people two. And the reason filter is used a lot is because in react your state is immutable. You can't directly change it. So what we're doing here is we're just returning a new array. We're making a copy of it without Bob. So we'll say uh, people dot filter and let's do so it takes in We'll say person as our variable here and then we then we want to put our condition. So we'll say where person dot ID is not equal to two because Bob's ID is two and then we'll go ahead and console dot log. It's console log people two. Okay, so we'll save that and we take a look at our array. And you can see we just have Karen and Sharon. Bob is no longer in the array because we filtered him out based on this condition right here. Okay, so we'll be using filter quite a bit. All right, so I'm going to stop the video here. In the next video, we're going to look at the spread operator. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're also going to look at destructuring. All right, so I will see you in the next one.